All right, Mama. Good boy. Do you think? The music starts. All right. I'd like to say thank you for everybody that managed to get here with, without COVID. And uh, I know there are a lot of folks that wanted to come and couldn't be with us because of different health issues. But uh, it's a great group. I love seeing everybody. And I like the way everybody's kind of mingling around. We got cousins, we got old friends, we got new friends, everything. So. <laughs> Are you saying old is skinny or old is old? Friends that we've been friends for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and now I've heard about it for years. Trying to now Yeah. 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 No, she wants to picture of my son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I was friends with Spooky before Tanya was born. That's kind of gets you a feel for uh, yeah. numbers and everything. <laughs> <laughs> That is good. <laughs> <laughs> I will hold you. But anyways, uh, Lynn and I are so happy to be here and see all these old friends, new friends. Uh, it's great that we can make it all here together. Uh, I'm impressed by the way that our sons were able to make a restaurant out of our house. I mean, I've got plans now in case uh, in case we ever need a little cash, honey, we can just open our business. are fairly subjective concepts, so we'll see how we do in that regard. Okay. Macy did a wonderful job. 
I had to remind them over the last half century, half century, when I had made a number of fairly important presentations and speeches, and I'm fairly well versed in the art of oration. I do, however, at times, get a little emotional in my presentations, Wayne. And should I get emotional during this presentation, just bear with me. Deal with it. It'll come up. We'll get through it, okay? I may have to read parts of my presentation during that time, but deal with it, okay? Uh, a number of my close friends, many of whom are sitting here tonight, have accused me of, over the years, being, rightly or wrongly, a pontificator. <laughs> a pontificator, as many of you know, is just a fancy word for bullshit. <laughs> right? Um, and I have you to know I've worn that mantle proudly over the last few decades. Oh, Lord. <laughs> but tonight, tonight, I choose to transition from pontificator to a more um, dignified label. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this new label is to be that of a raconteur. Raconteur, raconteur is a, a reteller of, or a recounter of a story. The raconteur is more than a, more than a historian bound by cold and hard facts. The raconteur reveals the aesthetics of the story and the emotion it, it evokes in its listener. Okay? He knows when to hold back details that don't add to the story, but to exaggerate those details that do add to the story. He never, never, never does he hope to deceive the listener. Never hopes to deceive the listener. But always has an understanding that a, a poetic license is allowed. This poetic, license, this poetic license is allowed as long as any embellishment of the truth never departs the truth too far from reality as it borders on fiction. So tonight I have a grand story to tell. And thus, let it begin. Let it begin. Many stories begin with a prelude. In thinking about tonight's little soiree, Macy and I both question what have we done and why have we and why do we deserve all the wonderful things that have happened to us? Obvious questions. I would submit that probably the most compelling factor in answering those questions lies in the following universally undeniable statement that Sometimes it's taken as a negative, yes. but tonight should be considered as a positive. You don't get to choose your parents. <laughs> Boy, did Macy and I win an out on that deal? Yeah. No, we won. Yeah. There have been many great parents in this world. There are many great parents in this room, I'm sure. But no two couples would have been more better than it would have been better for us than Dr. Merritt Wilson and Macy and Gracie Bolton. Their parents who were loving, kind, caring, compassionate, reliable, respectful guardians of their children. Okay? They were positive role models, models, teachers in and out of the class, coaches on and off the field, enablers, listeners, decision makers, involved in church and civic and community activities. Um, very supportive academically, athletically, and socially. They showed us the immense and immeasurable importance of family. In short, they did the things that we thought, that they thought, and we know are most important in helping us become who we are today and helping us become who the parents we are today. In my opinion, they are the primary reason we are here tonight celebrating all those wonderful things that we've been able to share together. Perhaps you've heard the old saying, the older we get, the smarter our parents were. There's a lot of truth in that. You may not believe it, but sometimes older married couples don't remember 
all the specific episodes of earlier days together with the same degree of clarity of time and factual detail. Neither of us remember the exact times that we met or where we first met. Most of you remember the first time in like 1964, seventh grade, when we started liking each other? <laughs> Going to Graham High School football games, sitting on the cold bleachers with a blanket over our legs to keep warm. Yeah, yeah I like it clearly to keep us warm. It was so we could hold hands with each other and none of our nosy friends or our parents could see us. Um, it was about that time that I started getting hooked on you. 64, 65, we both remember three unique versions of our first kiss. <laughs> three. One was at a Christmas party at Paige Bruton's house on North Main Street in Graham under a mistletoe hanging from a curved door frame. <laughs> Two was at a party at the Graham Civic Center in the hallway outside the restrooms away from the main part of the building. Three one night at our church in Graham, in an upstairs classroom where we wandered off after MYF. Uh, and were finally found by my mother who had come to pick us up. To go up. <laughs> we both remember all three of these occasions, we just don't remember which one was first. <laughs> you know, first, second, or third, it really didn't matter. I, I was hooked by then. How old were y'all in these? All three. Uh, How old were you? About the age? Thirteen? Fourteen. 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 How old, oh, how old were you? 13? Okay. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. They were probably like 18. Yeah. Yeah. They were probably 18 in story. In 66, 67, 9th or 10th grade, our relationship continued, but we were occasionally tested. Yep. Remember when we started double dating with Paulette and Bill? <laughs> Bill was older, had his driver's license. Edible. We always got the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> going down the Blue Ridge Parkway one day and stopping at every scenic overlook to get a kiss. Really? I kind of think we knew where it was going back then because in that time we set our wedding date at the Silver Coach Drive-In in Grand North Carolina. And the problem was, we were so young, we, we miscalculated when we would graduate from college, and we set our wedding date a year or two early. But so we did announce our engagement on that day. In 1967, our junior year in high school, you moved to Pittsburgh. A lot of driving up and down Highway 87 during that period of time. We agreed we would see other people, but uh, I was still pretty hooked. 1969, you go to East Carolina. I go to Chapel Hill, still seeing each other some, still seeing other people some, but still hooked. Remember the moonlight night in my Volkswagen at the farm, surrounded by the cows. Hook, <laughs> line, and sink. <laughs> Give me a little less graphic, please. 1971. You transferred from Chapel Hill, from East Carolina to Chapel Hill your junior year. Lived just across from my fraternity house. And our father was sure you had something to do with that. And I did. <laughs> the writing was on the wall. Okay. December 30th, 1972, Pittsburgh United Methodist Church. We made it official, finally. Remember the picture of us, in, and it was there, it was on the TV. Remember the picture of us in the receiving line after the wedding with my foot awkwardly covering an item on the floor one of my fraternity brothers tried to hand me when we were shaking hands. <laughs> Remember those same fraternity brothers accosting me and chaining a cowbell around my neck. It was in a picture. Remember your dad cutting that cowbell around my neck off with a hacksaw back at your house before we went on our honeymoon. Remember two days after we got married, it rained, it snowed a foot, and you came down with the moths, which 
let me read this right, which was quite concerning since monks and young men who had not been exposed earlier could cause sterility. No, no. no. yes, yeah. so good. Snow foot, and we were marooned in our little apartment in Pittsburgh. Our friend Joe Winter. Thanks, Joe Winter. Joe. Joe Winter came to visit us, yes. got snowed in, and he and I stayed, slept on the floor in our kitchen, and Macy slept in our only bedroom, quarantined for two days. Hell of a way to start a wedding. Hell of a way to start a marriage. But we survived. We graduated from Carolina in 72 and 73, started working, bought our first home in Graham, and started planning a family. 329.79, our maker D was buried. Married. Married. <laughs> <laughs> 924.81, Clint was born. Then we started remembering what our parents had taught us so we could start teaching our kids to show unconditional love, to listen to and help others, to show patience, to work hard, but also work smart, to embody the importance of communication and parental involvement, to instill confidence, to try new things, maybe fail, but continue trying, to set high but attainable goals, and to be aware of the world, world around you. you. <laughs> Elementary years, remember you being a great parent extraordinaire? Me being a PTA president, teaching and coaching all oh, the might and midget softball or sporting events. Yes, sir. Best coach I ever had. Best <laughs> coach. Church activities, family trips, middle school, the importance of grades, new friends, sports, girls. <laughs> girls, many girls, teaching the responsibility of importance, uh, the responsibility, teaching responsibility and independence, how to be teammates but also individuals, how and when to be leaders but also when to be followers, how to win humbly and lose gracefully. <laughs> How to stand up in your beliefs. High school, helping with school projects, grades, college preps, student government, girls. <laughs> How many football games, soccer games, basketball games, baseball games, track meets, tennis yeah. events did we go to? All of them. We rarely, three, four, one. one. Rarely missed one. Woo! Yeah. Remember us building the Mara Tennis Center at Southern High School, soliciting help, Clint helping raise funds by speaking to civic clubs, designing and planning, and seeing it come to fruition. Remember watching our boys. Much here, Wayne. <laughs> or watching our boys flourish and grow into young men who made us so proud. In all the years at UNC, 1997 through 2008, 11 years. We were trying to stay young with them. Damn, it was hard sometimes. <laughs> I remember the huge smile, and it was a picture. I remember the huge smile on your face, Macy, when you had uh, escorted Will to the 50-yard line in Keenan Stadium when Will was crowned Mr. UNC. <laughs> How proud you were when Clint graduated from law school. How many times did we travel to Chocolate Hill to take these guys and a handful of their friends to dinner? Two minutes. <laughs> Remember Darley's Disciples? Yeah, right. Dance Marathon. <laughs> the Rat. Yeah. Okay. Remember in June of 2000 when Will went to study in Spain, our first trip to Europe and see him? Remember June 2002? <laughs> I lost my job with Burlington Industries when they went bankrupt. And you worried about me not working and getting bored. 
remember May 2003, Clint stays in Australia, and we go and visit him and meet our future Swedish daughter. 2006, you retire, and we go to Sweden to meet our future in-laws. February 2008, we finish our house and farm. March 2008, Clint and Lena get married at our new house that we had just finished on the farm. July 10, 2008, Will gets married at Biltmore in Asheville, North Carolina. 2011, Eve is born in New York City. 2012, Addie's born in Phoenix. 2013, both of the families moved back to North Carolina. 2013, Axel's born in Chapel Hill. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 2014, Palmer is born in Chapel Hill. How fortunate we've been to have our family back together since the boys moved home. We have always been blessed and thankful that our guys have been thoughtful enough to allow us to be active parts in their lives. Whether it's been when they were in school, out of state, or since they moved back home. Remember jumping waves with our wave runners at Topsail Beach with the boys? Or watching fireworks from our pontoon and playing drinking games with all the college with all their college buddies at any one of now 19 annual lake weeks. Remember playing this is a good one. Remember playing beer pong at Will's apartment after a UNC football game. Will and I beat you and Clint. Then I went on to Will and I went on to win 13 straight games of beer pong. And your proud husband became a world beer pong champion. That's a picture. Senior division. Senior division. I've got the t-shirt to prove. Okay? We even wrote a new verse in the Let the Fat Lady Sing. That night. When we were in Spain, Clint getting lost on the ferry from Valencia to Ibiza. I wasn't lost, I was asleep. Us thinking he had been kidnapped or fallen overboard, <laughs> only to find him asleep in the passenger's lounge. Trucker's lounge. Remember trekking across Sweden with Clint and Lena and her parents? Mm. Playing soccer and sharpshooting in their backyard, uh, eating prawns and drinking schnapps. <laughs> or recently, as, as it recently as November of this year, having 200 or more of their best friends and their children uh, and at our house for our annual farm night. Hay ride, hot dog roast, bonfire with s'mores, and this year. This year, a live band. Okay? Inclusive. Or just this past Thanksgiving week, as Will and his kids invited us to join them in St. John's in the U.S. Virgin Islands, where we swam and snorkeled in the clear blue Caribbean waters and had cocktails in the sand outside the beach bar at Cruise Bay. Amen. Amen. How fortunate we have been. Through raising and educating two energetic, intellectual, athletic, questioning, loving, and challenging boys, we survived. <laughs> Through your fulfilling career in education and my two rewarding careers in textiles and banking, we survived. Through gallbladder surgery and cataracts and back surgery, Two knees and two hip replacements we have survived and flourished ish. <laughs> have kept traveling and are still enjoying life. Uh, I've been so lucky to have had you by my side for 50 plus years. Where would I have been without your patience, your guidance, your smile, your humor, 
Did I mention your patience? Yes. <laughs> they understand. Without your beauty, your These are your really good friends. Your wise <laughs> counsel, your technology skills, and your patience. <laughs> Without your compassion, your faith in family, and your unparalleled skills as a mother, and your patience. <laughs> your enduring confidence in me and my limited abilities has made me a better man and your unwavering love in me has made my life more rewarding than I could possibly deserve did I mention your patience? <laughs> thank you Macy for being who you are and for making me better Will, Clint, Lena Thank you again for tonight. Uh, we are profoundly proud of you as our kids and the parents of our grandchildren. Palmer, Axel, Addie, Eve, be proud of who you are. Be happy. Be proud of your parents and who they are. Hell, be proud of your grandparents. <laughs> but most importantly, never forget and underestimate the importance and value of family. Okay? A few year, years ago, I was working on a 50th high school class reunion. Right, Spooky? Yep. <laughs> and I remember running across a quote, which I've altered a little bit for tonight. It goes like this. And just like that, in the blink of an eye, December 30th, 1972, it was 50 years ago. Hard to believe. Well, thank you all for coming and sharing this time with us tonight. We love you all. Love you.